Hello and welcome. Today we are going to show you how a remote code execution vulnerability when shipped in a vulnerable Docker image results into a vulnerable web application that uh, we are going to build using the same Docker image. So this is a simple backend of this web application. So we are going to use a simple Fastify web application backend. So what this does is this Fastify web app uh, ships with this convert binary and using this convert binary we can resize any image into uh, any size like if we give it a large image then we can resize that image into 280 by 150 pixels right and uh, as you can see we are passing arguments as strings to this particular convert binary that means using a string concatenation remote code execution is not uh, possible so this vulnerability is existing because of the third party component that ships with docker images so the need to scan docker images is uh, of great significance and additionally this video is sponsored by chainguard.dev and in the end of this lecture we are going to show you how we can use an integrated chain guard to secure your development workflow so that we can secure our web applications from these type of attacks by scanning the container images so let's have a look on this docker file so as we can see we are using notes runtime version 6.1.0 and then we are going to make a folder called as user src goof in the container and then we are going to copy uh, this repository and we are going to set the working directory we are going to execute a system command called as who am i so i'm going to show you the significance of this who am i command uh, later in this video when we are going to integrate chain guard in our web application workflow so and finally we are going to expose these ports and execute run M, uh, npm install so what this will do is it will install all the dependencies that are specified in this package log.json right so without wasting much time let's go to the terminal and uh, before doing this we need to ensure that the docker daemon is running so we can print all the containers that are running so currently we have no running containers and if we go to docker as you can see this is the docker we have no images built we don't have any existing builds right and yeah so first of all we can do ls dash l or yeah ls dash l doesn't work in powershell we can do ls uh, and as you can see we are in the we are in this repository and docker file is present in the current working directory so first of all we are going to build that image using docker so we are going to do docker build and we are going to specify the current directory to look for the docker file and then we are going to tag this docker image as rce so this should build the docker image which is definitely going to be vulnerable to remote code execution and that is where we emphasize the need to scan our docker images right so this will take a while yeah so as you can see the build is finished and the docker file uh, was used to build this container image we can go to images and as you can see we have this 659 mb of image size and uh, yeah that's it this was created one second ago and all of this we can scan this image now but we'll, we'll do that thing later on first of all we are going to deploy the web application locally so we are going to do uh, first let me clear the terminal we are going to do docker we are going to run this container we are going to bind the containers port 3112 to the host port 3112 and we are going to name this container as um, let's call the container name as goof and the image that will the, and the image that we will be using to build this container was tagged with the name of rce so this should uh, build this container yeah so I have a typo yeah so this should work so as you can see the example app is listening on port 3112 so if we go to chrome and if we try to go to localhost 3112 public index.html we have this right here right we choose the file and yeah so first let's see how this web application works we can go to wallpapers we can go to any uh, big photo like this we can upload that image we can click on the resize button and as you can see this large image is resized to 280 by 150 pixels right so the vulnerability here is uh, let me show you the payload so in the exploits folder we have the payload.txt so this is a normal text file uh, which has this payload and what it does is it creates a file called as rce in the working directory of the container where the web, app web application is deployed right so we are going to contain uh, so we are going to 
convert this payload into payload dot jpg yeah jpg so now that we have our payload converted to payload dot jpg we are going to go to this and we are going to upload that file right so we have exploits we have payload we can open it and we can click on resize so as we can see we can't see the image because because that was basically a payload and the image resizing is success and if we go to docker and let's go to containers we have this container running and we need to shell into the container we can also use a command called as docker exec it or something to shell into the container let's do ls dash l so as we can see a file called as rce was just created in the current working directory of this container now this vulnerability is because of the unscanned image unscanned docker image that was used to build this container so if we go to docker scout and uh, right now we have this rce latest image and as you can see this has a total of 40 50 uh, 60 70 this has 70 plus vulnerabilities right now we can click on view packages and cves right so these are all the uh, vulnerabilities that, that this particular docker image has right and additionally the size of this docker image was uh, around 650 mbs so when this image was used to build the container these were the logs and we can also go to source logs yeah these were the logs so we have ran a command called as who am I. So whenever we use Docker images, the default user who is uh, executing commands is root. So that is another security vulnerability because we should never use root as the default user. So now let's go to uh, chain guard images. So you can include and integrate chain guard in your development workflows to secure your Docker images when you're deploying the web applications locally and in the cloud as well. We can click on view images and here we have all these images we want a node image a node runtime so we can click on node and on node you have a lot of images on this page right uh, we are going to use this lat latest image and this is the pull url so we are going to use the pull url in our uh, docker file so from node we are going to do this let's use the chain guard image to build this docker container so first of all we are going to do docker build and uh, look for the docker file in the current working directory tag the image as secured right and this uh, will probably fail because when we are using chain guard in our development workflow the default user that is uh, executing the docker commands uh, is a node user so when npm install is executed all of these dependencies are installed in the node modules folder and the node user don't have right access to this particular folder so we have to go to the docker file and First of all, we are going to switch to the root user and then we are going to change the ownership of this particular folder to the node user. So for that, we need to run a system command called as change the ownership recursively and the user is node and the group is also node and this is going to be the directory, right? And once done with that, we are going to switch our user back to the node user, right? So this is another security practice that is taken into consideration when we are using chain guard in our development workflow so we are going to execute this build command again and this time it will not fail for sure uh, another thing to note here is when we are using chain guard in our development workflow the size of the image that is used to build a docker contain container is significantly decreased so if we go to docker and if we go to um, build so as you can see the previous build was failed and this is the success uh, build uh, if you go to images we have the secured image so as you can see the size is dropped to 145 mb earlier it was 657 mb so that is another advantage of using uh, chain guard images in our development workflows right so finally we are going to deploy uh, this docker container so we can use docker run and then we can uh, do the same port bindings like this and then we can name the container as secured and then finally we can uh, tag the image which was also secure right so if we go to docker and if we compare these two images so the earlier image had uh, a total of a lot of vulnerabilities like we can go to docker scout right so this is a good tool to compare these things so we have a total of 70 plus vulnerabilities if we switch to the this image and four five six and seven so earlier we used to have 70 vulnerabilities in the normal docker image which was this rce latest which was having this remote code execution vulnerability but now we only have a total of seven vulnerabilities 
so this shows the significance to secure your docker images and secure your development workflow both in development and in production this uh, video is sponsored by chainguard.dev so i hope you enjoyed the content uh, we will meet in the next lecture till then have a great day ahead and thank you